Welcome to my studio. In this video, we're going to be doing a drawing of a cowgirl. I took this picture at a local rodeo, and I just like the way she was standing there. I'm also going to incorporate a couple images that I got off the internet. I'll show you in the drawing how I use those. And uh, so I think it's going to be an interesting drawing. If you're ready to go, let's start drawing. I'm going to start uh, to draw this cowgirl. And uh, I didn't like all this stuff that's going on here in the picture. Uh, there's a lot of confusion, these bars. And, and uh, so I decided that I'd leave those out. But I also knew that I wanted to put something in here because I didn't want all this blank space. So I found a, a picture of a couple little calves about the same size as the one in this picture right here. And so I just added those into the picture. That's something you see easy to do. You can get these off of the internet. And uh, if you, so often when you take a picture, with a camera, it's just not uh, not exactly what you wanted. And the nice thing about being an artist and doing this with a pencil or paintbrush or whatever, you can leave out and add whatever you want. So I'm going to get started here, I guess, with uh, I did trace this in uh, so that we'd save some time a little bit. But I'll kind of, again, if you follow my videos, you know the procedure that I use. I create a grid on here by dividing this picture in half and then dividing each half into half again. So I've got four squares this way and I do the same thing on this this uh, side of the picture. I divide it in half and then I divide that half in, in half and this half in half. And so I've got four squares on this side. And then in video number four, and I think video number nine, I described how I enlarge a uh, photograph to a bigger size, how I scale it up. So the grid on the drawing is in proportion with the grid on the uh, photograph. That way I can look at the image and I see where these different parts of the picture fall in these squares here, in these, in these blocks. And so you're not really drawing the whole picture at a t one time, you're kind of drawing each individual block. And so you want to uh, make sure that they fit together, that they line up, but it's a less daunting task if you just look at it at one block at a time. And uh, once you get the uh, image kind of sketched in lightly, you need to go back and again look at it and see if it looks right. Uh, the human eye is really amazing in that it can pick out little differences that uh, things that are out of proportion and that type of thing. If it just doesn't look right, look again at your at your uh, uh, grid and see if everything is lining up where it should in the grid. So, with that said, I want to start with. Uh, I think I'll start up here with the sky, and I've got some some trees in the background here, so I'm going to kind of do those because I don't want to hold off on those while I do this and I have to work my hand over the top of the drawing. So you're going to kind of work from the top down or you know, work from the left to right if you're right-handed. And so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is take out some of these uh, grid lines because now that we've got the uh, drawing photograph sketched in, we don't really need these. Okay, what I've done here is I have uh, actually created a couple different backgrounds. I've got the I've got the trees right here, and I use the uh, little smudge stick. After I put down the powder graphite, I use this little smudge stick to indicate some of these uh, branches that, that have a sky as a backdrop. But then I decided to add just another layer here. So I put some mountain ranges in the back and they're just a slight different value than the sky because they're way back in the back. And I'm going to have to add some more dark areas in these uh, tree branches here, but I want to wait until I get a little bit further along in the drawing to do that. So right now I'm going to start uh, 
with these different cowboys here that are leaning up against the fence. And uh, let's see, the hats are pretty much going to be white because they've, they've all got like white uh, straw hats, cowboy hats. And uh, it's summer, so it's pretty hot. It's pretty hot there. And uh, so everybody had a white, lightweight straw hat on. And uh, let's see. I got a 3B here. Okay, I want to just draw those in a little bit outline and give a little bit of uh, structure there. And this guy comes around like this. And then his back of his head here is in shadow. And it's hard to see because there's a post going right across there, but I think there's a the sun is coming in from this direction, from uh, right to left. So I'm going to put just a little bit of shadow on this part of the hat right there. Put some graphite in there. I changed the shape of his arm there because I just didn't like the way it was. It doesn't look like, I can't see what he's resting it on, something in there, because this bar is, bright, is blocking the view. So I'm just going to put his arm going down his side there, kind of maybe out on his hand, out on his knee. And let's see, there's a really light colored belt that goes across here. There's a couple of uh, strong creases that come in here. Get those in. And let's see, put in some dark here for the, for the blue jeans. Okay. Again, if I can do it, I try to go with the, my blending stick here. I try to blend across the uh, opposite of the direction that the uh, sh that I drew the sh the uh, shading lines. In other words, I drew the lines down this direction that way, and that's why I'm blending it this way. It just makes it a little easier to blend. Sometimes you sit a tight area, you can't quite do that, but as much as you can possibly can, it makes it easier. This line over here made him look too fat. You don't see too many fat cowboys. You see a few fat artists, but not a whole lot of fat cowboys. Frederick Wemmington must have been a real sight to the cowboys on the range and the uh, and the cavalry officers. And he painted a lot of the cavalry in the 1800s late 1800s, and he was a pretty big guy. He was probably 250 to 300 pounds, and uh, they must have got quite a charge out of seeing him ride a horse. But they couldn't argue with the way he could paint. Okay, and this guy, his hat is like this guy right here. His hat goes up like that and then kind of comes over here and it comes down here. I'll turn this light on here. And let's see, then the brim of the hat goes down like this. And then you just don't see much of his face there, just kind of in shadow there. But I do realize that this guy has got to be bigger because I've got him too small compared to the next, next fellow. 
So first of all, I'm gonna make his hat bigger. change the position of that arm right there. I don't like that position either. Okay, that looks more realistic. I can live with that. And let's see, this hat is like that. He's got a little bit of the rim is colored there, a little shaded, a little value on it. And uh, let's see, this guy. He is a pretty good sized guy, too. Drawing a group of characters, you want to make sure that they're, you know, they, they're somewhat in proportion to to each other. Okay. Now this guy's got some interesting shadows going on there. A big shadow underneath his arm here. It's a big crease right there. And this person in front of him is is uh, in shadow, so. Okay, and then we've got, uh, let me just put in a little value here on his shirt with my blending stick here. Because even though it's light, it's not totally black, or totally uh, void of shade, or there's some value there, so.
Okay. Don't need to go into a lot of detail with these guys because they're in the background. And we got this guy right here. This one right here. So I'm going to kind of Find the shape of the hat there. <clears throat> See, actually, that hat doesn't come down that low, it comes more around here like this. So you can see a little bit of his face in there. And then there's a, a shadow created on his shirt here by that hat, <clears throat> by that hat brim. And let's see, the arm comes in here, and then his hand is like right here. And his shirt's down there like that. Actually, I think I've got his arm too low, his belt's too low. So I'm going to bring his arm up here a little bit further, up. about up in here. <clears throat> Take this line out, and this one out. Even though I've drawn this with a grid, you still want to look at it and, and see if it looks right to you. You know, because sometimes, you, even though that grid it should be in proportion, and it, something may have changed and it just doesn't quite look right. at a long angle too. Just not looking right here. Got to erase that out of there and we'll start over. Okay, so far we've got our cowboys in the background and uh, now I need to work on this calf a little bit here. It kind of comes down like this and then down here and sort of starts a little bit of a shoulder right there. Oh, I think I 
and 9B would start to darken some of these areas right here. Like there's a part of the hip bone right there. So I want to get that. And it comes down here. And it's right down here. All right, now I'm going to start on this cowgirl. So let's see. It's, there's a shadow that comes off of here like that. And then the brim comes up like here. And uh, with this drawing in the, in the frame here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I, I shaded this part of the hat right here. There's a little shadow that comes off of here. Just a little bit of the uh, hat band right there, visible. And underneath here, the light is not getting in there so it's darkening it's a little bit darker shade and let's see there's a little indentation here that's a very popular style which you see out west nowadays I'm going to have to do something with some of this background here, make it kind of dark because there's parts of her hat right here that need to highlight and doesn't show up uh, with, with, a, with a white background. So, all right, let's begin with the, the flesh tones here. Uh, get rid of those, those uh, grid lines again. Okay, get an even tone here to begin with. Just dragging my pencil over the paper so lightly I'm not even putting any pressure on it. Just letting it kind of slide over the paper. Now there's a shadow that comes across here where the brim of the hat is. Yeah, I don't want it too much. And also there's a shadow underneath here where the jaw, the jaw is. Okay, now there's, the hair is quite dark. And I think it comes around. It just kind of comes down here in front of the ear. It's 
it's going to be darker somewhere if we think an IED comes in here. A little bit of shadow behind the ear. A little bit in there. I'm going to run these lines down just about the same direction that they're that the hair would fall. So let's see, it comes down here just about there. All right, I want to get these these lines in the background here. I want to get those in next. They're kind of, because I'm going to put some shading on, I don't want to, I don't want to lose the shape of them here, so. ones over here on this side also. All right, now I'm going to just uh, use my blending stick here to shade that because it's very subtle as a white shirt, kind of a cream colored shirt. So I can see right now this cap has got to be darker. I'm not going to worry about the shape of them because they're so small you wouldn't see it. But, uh, Okay, I've darkened a few areas over here, the, the cowboy's jeans here and this, this uh, cap, and a couple areas on the cowgirl here. And I've penciled in a couple more cowboys over here just to balance out this blank area over here. And uh, I'm gonna bring some of this background down here, just down to about here so I can uh, 
finish the paint or the drawing off to about that point right there. And I'm just going to kind of in that uh, shadow. Okay, and then we've got another half back here. And his head is partially covered there. I think I'm going to just kind of lighten this along the top here. Okay, and I'm going to kind of just sort of guess where this shadow is. There's a whole science behind how to figure exactly where the light is hitting and what kind of shadow it's going to cast. shadow is going to be quite a bit darker than the, the uh, cap that's creating it. I said once before, I said that in shadows, they're not one solid value. There's uh, different values going on within the shadow. It's not just one solid uh, color or, or value if you're doing black and white or color. And I'll kind of indicate that by blending this fairly smooth and then going back in with a needle eraser and picking out some, giving some texture and some variation.
Okay. And let's see, I need to put in my shadow for this other cap over here. change a little bit because this one's going more this way so I'm gonna Take off some of this shadow in here. Just too much. to darken these guys a little bit more. right about there. there and then the nose is down to these big areas down here and first thing I need to do is get rid of some of these grid lines again to me a real interesting part of this figure this girl's figure here is that all the light patterns that are happening on the jeans here sun hitting him. So and let's see, I said I was going to take out some of that uh, solid look on the uh, on the shadows here, so
just tap it a few times, you know, with the heat eraser, it picks up some of that. Okay, there we go. All right, there's a little bit of space. You can see here a little bit of uh, light between the legs of this calf and her uh, derriere here. And that's important because it allows you to define this edge right here, the shape. If you didn't have that, it'd be, it's all blended in there. But, uh, you'd lose some of that uh, ability to now I want to do the, uh, the jeans here, the blue jeans, and I'm going to use a uh, 3B pencil somewhere. I've got a 3B pencil here. It's a 9B. There's a 3B, okay. Try to shade in some of these uh, patterns here, some of these light patterns.
just going to bring this all the way over into the light area here uh, so I can pick out some highlights. There's a so so straight line right through here. The shadow I think is created by the arm here. It just it's right there. So I'm gonna take that out and uh, got a shadow you probably got a highlight the shadows just a little farther over the belt in here. And there's a cell phone. This is a modern day cowgirl. And she's got a cell phone. Although I don't know how modern because it's not it's one of the older cell phones. It's not like the Galaxy or the iPhone. first cell phone I ever used was an old Motorola flip-top phone. We were doing a photo shoot and we had to reschedule the models because of weather. And so I had to use a cell phone to contact them all. And I uh, thought that was really cool. Far we come.
that time. All right, I want to bring this other uh, leg down here. And it's just slightly darker than this, this one right here. Now I can bring some more of this uh, ground cover down. But first I have to get rid of some of these, some more of these uh, grid lines here. Got some areas, some light and dark areas within the shadow. And uh, do these shoes here? These uh, these aren't cowboy boots. They're kind of a lace-up uh, boot that are boot that's probably easier to get on and uh, probably more comfortable than a cowboy boot. I don't know if they've got. Can't tell if I've. In fact, if the heel is buried in the sand, I can't tell if they've got a extra heel. Usually they do have somewhat of a heel to protect the uh, rider from their foot going through the stirrup, but uh, not too many cowboys nowadays have the uh, high heel that you see in the, the old westerns and that. They have a high heel, it's, it's called a walking heel, just sort of a little bit of a modified regular street heel. Or they have a, what they call a, uh, well it is called a walking heel. It's, it looks a little, a little bit like the old, the real high heel, but it's not near as, as high. It's much more comfortable if you have to walk on any kind of pavement or anything like that. So, it goes around like this and then this, there's a I don't know what this thing is for. There's a little fringe thing here that sticks up. And it's not really decorative. 
Uh, not that sure. I'll pass somebody. Or if you know, give me a ring. It's got my, I think my email is on there somewhere. And let's see, this comes around. That and there's this picture right here. Okay. All right, now we're going to bring this down, bring the background here down, the ground cover, and we'll do that with uh, powdered graphite. And then we can kind of pick out some highlights. And this was back, uh, shot this back behind the uh, the uh, arena where all the stock was kept in before it's drawn out. I'm sure these little calves are probably part of the calf roping contest. And they weren't. Uh, they weren't up for performing yet, so they're just kind of hanging out there, as actors tend to want to do. Well, these guys weren't acting. <laughs> okay. They actually take a lot of precautions that animals don't get hurt in the rodeos nowadays, like might have happened in years past. They even have a little protector that goes around their horns so they don't get a rope burn or anything. Else. It's a much safer sport. It's still dangerous, but it's a much safer sport for animals and riders as it was in the past. Just something to break up this uh, this big expanse of solid value in here. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this drawing up and uh, walk away from it for a little bit and then come back to it. And uh, it's amazing sometimes you might even see stuff that you just never saw before because you get too close to these things and it's, uh, it's hard to see with the same objective eye. Um, it helps to walk away from it for a little bit and come back at it with fresh eyes. Like 
I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, hope you learned something from it. In this next video, we're going to be drawing this kind of complicated woodland scene. But by using this grid, we break it down into simple little parts. And so it becomes a much easier drawing to do. So join me then.